Nights at Freddy's. That's where I want to be. Five Nights at yeah, Freddy's. Yeah, yeah. That song lives rent free Ooh. in my brain. And not the actual <laughs> song, but Jack Black's version of it. Where he's like, Five Nights at Freddy's. <laughs> oh, absolutely it does. Oh, baby. Welcome to the Five Nights at Freddy's episode. Spectacular. Hello, everybody. Hello, if you internet. Don't, <laughs> if you don't want spoilers, then I don't know. I don't uh, know what to tell you. Yeah, I don't know. If you don't want spoilers, I feel like you've seen it already. But if not, then whatever. We'll talk about it just candidly. It's gonna be fine. I'm glad you saw it because you had all your premiere stuff for your documentary going on and I was like, oh man, he's not gonna be able to see it and now it's just gonna be me talking about it and I'm not gonna have anything <laughs> to say without spoiling. But now we get to rip Freddy a new faz ass. <laughs> oh yeah, baby. Yeah, I was also worried that I wasn't gonna be able to see it um, because I wanted to go and see it in theaters and then I was like, wait, I think it's streaming somewhere. Oh, yeah, it's on, it it's is. on Peacock. It's on Peacock. And so this morning I woke up and I had that realization and I was like, the movie's an hour and 50 minutes and we're recording in two hours. I could do this. So you just so finished I, uh, it? I just finished it. Yeah. Wow. Like 10 minutes before we hopped on. Well, um, what's your rating out of 10? Out of 10, I think... I think I'd give it like a six, mm. six and a half, something like I'd say that. I'd that's fair. I, I think it's like a six out of ten movie for me. Yeah, like it was, it's fine. Yeah, I, I want to preface a lot of stuff because I, after I saw it, it came out two days earlier here in the UK. I don't know why. Usually we get the stuff later and I tweeted out that I saw it and everyone else was like, how did you see it? <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> were you at the premiere? I was like, no. So, 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 no, we just get it early because we're um, special. Because we're cool. Because Scott Carson was like, hey, he's fresh, not finny. <laughs> he's from the US, isn't he? Yeah. Or is he? Yeah. Then why'd you guys get That's crazy you get it so I don't know, but I, I saw it and then I tweeted like, just saw the FNAF movie, dot, dot, dot. And I was like, I'm not going to say anything about it because I don't want to like... Because I saw it early, and I don't want like temper expectations. But so many people were asking, and I just said yeah. I didn't. I didn't really like it as a reply. And so many people were like, "I'm waiting for a," but I loved it to come in. Like, right? Yeah. <laughs> He's gonna say it, right? <laughs> no, no. It was. It was kind of. Uh, it was everything I expected it to be. Yeah, it's like we were talking about how it's like middle of the road, and that was kind of the worst case scenario where it's like. It's fine, but I'll forget about this movie in two weeks. Yeah. Um, which I guess it's yeah. not made for us. It's made for like diehard fans, which you could really tell. But I will adm I will point out that I like the FNAF lore. As much, I yeah. don't really play the games all that much. I haven't really finished many of them. But I actually like the lore, especially the lore for like the first three, four games, I think is pretty cool. Yeah. So I, I'm not going in being like, oh, he's not a fan. He doesn't know anything about it. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I know about the Bite of 87. I, I know, know about, about Springlocks. I know about <laughs> a little thing about the books. I watched MatPat's newest videos about it like months ago when he released them. He, does, he has like three videos now where he's like, finally going over the lore. Sorry, finally going over the lore. <laughs> And I watched those, and half of it I can't remember because it's convoluted as fuck. It's like trying to understand Kingdom Hearts at this point. But by and large, I think it's it's decent. It's fun lore. I like it. Yeah, I would heavily agree that the FNAF lore is like Kingdom Hearts level, where I'm like, I can follow some of it, and then there's other shit where it's just like, oh, this gets real convoluted. Yeah, I think I think the bad side of that is that he was creating something fun and then fans start theorizing and then he was like haha you thought it was this but i'm making it this now and then it just became like trying to subvert fans expectations which i'm always a firm believer of not doing i feel like if yeah. you have a story in place and people are theorizing about it i feel like if people guess it right you just keep doing that you don't change it just because someone guessed what you're doing <laughs> yeah okay so what i think we should do is I think that we should give uh, give our overall basic 
notes that don't go into spoiler territory. Yes. And then uh, in the video, we'll put a timestamp, and in the audio, we'll put an audio timestamp in post, because I do want to go over some spoiler stuff. Spoilers! Spoilers! Um, overall, I thought it was fine. It was... Yeah. I will say... Having, like, going in, not really having the highest expectations, but seeing so many people in the theater have mm -hmm. such incredible energy for the movie that yeah. that kind of made it a little bit better. Like, when certain cameos were happening, people were cheering, and I was like, that's kind of fun. Like, you kind yeah. of feed off that energy a little bit. Yeah, I kind of want to go and see it in the theater because I think it would be fun. And just, like... A little bit for the meme of like I <laughs> went and saw the Five Nights at Freddy's movie in theaters. Yeah, but like people, people are having fun going to see this, and I think that that's that's great. And yeah, it is. I think overall, like it's um, it's a decently fun movie. It's not as fun as I wanted it to be. And no, it's a bit tamer it's, than I expected. Yeah, I kind of wanted it to be a little bit more gruesome. Um, yeah, it's not scary at all. Like, no, no, it's not. Like, the the first two games, I would say, the third game I don't think is that scary because the jump scares kind of suck, but the first two games are legitimately, like, scary. They're tense. They yeah. put you on edge, and the, the ambiguity of the story is like, what's actually happening? Did he put them in? Did he put it? Did he kill the babies? Is that what he did? He kill, did he murder their kids? Like, that's all, uh, that's all fucked. No, this <laughs> is crazy. But it's it's not scary whatsoever. <laughs> there there wasn't a single time while I was watching it that I even felt a little bit tense. Yeah, and like, I I, was just like, okay. I think it was a mistake to show the animatronics moving around. I know people want to see that, but I don't think they should have because every time they moved, it just looked silly and dumb and. The, the work that the Jim Henson company did on the animatronics. I will say the production design, the set design, the set itself, and the animatronics are as good as they could be. I don't think you could yeah. do that any better. And the lighting like in the scenes was all really cool. But every time the animatronics moved, I'm like, no, nah, you're kind of taken away from the fear factor of them. They don't look as scary and intimidating. And as soon as they move, it's like, oh, now I know it's a guy in a suit because it just looks yeah. weird. <laughs> I I agree. I think that they they showed a bit too much of the animatronics, and I think they they showed too much too early as well. I think what the strong suit of the first two games are is that you don't really know what's going on yet, so you do kind of theorize and talk about it afterwards, and you're like, I think they talked about killing kids and putting them in the animatronics, and then you're like, no, that can't be it. But then the movie kind of does away with all of that, and within like the first half hour, it's like, oh, it's kids in the animatronics? Cool. And then he has yeah. like a dream, and he's like, are, are you the kids in the animatronics? And they're like, yeah. It's like, <laughs> they just kind of like front load all of that, and it's like you as a person who knows the lore is like, yeah, I know this already, so it's kind of weird to see that, but I feel like people who don't know that should be watching the movie being like, wait, is it kids in the animatronics? Like thinking about yeah. it but by the time that happens it's like okay now i know what the twist is and that's it and they had matthew lillard's character in the beginning of it but the whole yeah. lead up to the movie coming out they were like yeah he's playing afton so it's like well he's the bad guy then <laughs> like yeah that's not a twist i i mean for general audiences it is but he also like disappears after the start of the movie and he has like six minutes of screen time so it's like I th I think he's probably the bad guy. <laughs> the the whole movie I th I thought like plot wise obviously like knowing FNAF lore um I already knew stuff but like watching it as a movie everything including all of the jump scares and all of the quote unquote scary moments I thought it was a an extremely predictable movie. Yeah. Um it was very even, straightforward. Like, extremely straightforward and i think i thought that the pacing was not great no it was terrible like, i think <laughs> like i think that like we were just talking about how it's not scary there's there's not a lot of elements from the actual game as far as the horror of it of like what made it scary yeah and i i want to point out the ign interview because they give it four out of ten and everyone's like 
the headline says like too much plot not enough video game or something like that mm -hmm. and everyone's like oh my god it's the too much water meme again but if you actually read the review they're saying like there's not that many elements from the game in the movie other than like face value stuff and they yeah. think that the plot that was there is almost like they almost go in on it too much on like him losing his brother it's like you kind of dwell on this aspect of it a bit too long and like i like i get it you need the motivation to, for the character and i get it but it like it goes back to it like two or three times too many times and i'm like i get it you're looking for your brother yeah. like can we just move the fucking plot along instead of sitting in this middling zone yeah i i i thought that it was it was weird because it had a ton of fan service but also with stuff like that not enough where it was like yeah. we don't we don't care about his dead brother <laughs> yeah but also i feel like if you're going to make the five nights at freddy's movie like really lean into it there was no like yeah no one touched freddy's nose and it made like a boop sound cuz that's like the easter yeah. egg in all the games there's like a little like balloon boy toy that shows up but no one ever goes mm. like hi or hello. Yeah, I want that. I, I want the jump scare sound. I want like the actual Foxy singing from the game. I want like all the sounds from the game. I want the yay sound effect somewhere. When he goes to press the like the recording from Matthew Lillard of like here's your first shift. Yeah, I was so disappointed that he didn't go hello. Hello? Yeah. I was like, that would have been so easy and so much fan service. And it's also not like a weird it thing. Get so a general audience isn't going to be like, what? And it was like, oh, that that would have been an easy thing. Because I, I think that they could have made this movie in a good, fun way a bit more. <laughs> this kind of sounds bad. Like a bit more gimmicky. Yeah. Because um, he doesn't sit at the fucking cams and do his job once. <laughs> He's NOT like, A SINGLE TIME! Th there's no thing about, like, the power going out and he has to, like, sit in the room and close the doors. Like, I know you can't translate everything from the game into the movie. Yeah. But those things can translate into the movie. At least once. And they're good elements yeah. that actually work really well in the game that would be cool in the movie. And they didn't do any of them. <laughs> you know what just came out? We've been talking about it this whole episode. But a little movie called mm. the FNAF at Freddy's movie came out. Mm -hmm. But... It's not streaming here yet, but you know where it is streaming? Because you America. just watched it this morning. It's streaming in America. Yeah, so if you wanted to watch it on Peacock, you could use NordVPN. If you're anywhere else, just click, clack, kluk. It's not even that many clicks, it's just one click, and you're in America, and then you can watch the movie. You can do it whenever you want. NordVPN is going to save your life. I want to watch some cool anime. I just switched my location, and then I could be on Japanese Netflix. I want to get I did this the other day because I'm coming to visit you. Mm. I changed my location to London to buy flights to come over there, and it was a little bit cheaper because Hell the, yeah. the NordVPN, I, it was great. It was wonderful. Our Nord and Savior, thank you. Ah, thank you so much. So, if you want to be able to stream uh, things from different locations, if you want to protect yourself from those creepy crawlies getting into your computer, where can they go? They also have Nord Locker now, which uh, is an encrypted cloud service that you can put all your stuff up on and keep it all safe. Ooh! They also have NordPass, which is a password manager. They do lots of stuff. If you wanted to get it for yourself, if you wanted to get a two-year plan with four bonus months on top, includes all plans, standard, plus, and complete, you would have to go to nordvpn.com slash brain. That's nordvpn.com slash brain. 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 All right. Let's get into more spoiler territory because now I just want to talk specifics, and okay. I feel like if we don't frame it as... Yeah, get out like, if you don't want to talk about it. Seen it yet. I that was one of my biggest problems with the movie was that he didn't do his job at all. Never. Like there <laughs> was there was not a single time even though it would be like kind of played out I guess as far as like horror stuff goes it was like I wanted to see him sitting at the desk and be like, "Wait, did one of the things just move?" Yeah, and like him, check like, the other guessing. cameras. 
Yeah, he he literally did not check the cameras at all. It's like the only thing the game does. That's like the main gimmick, and you didn't even put it once in the movie. <laughs> and there's there's never a time where he's like behind a closed door, and one of the animatronics is like banging on the door, like yeah. in the game or anything he, like that. He does have to like flick the power thing, but it's not it's not like in his office because. Not only that, but they did the office like one to one perfect from the game. Like when I saw it in yeah. the movie, I was like, I'm not even the biggest fan of this, and this is cool to see it on the big screen. Yeah. With but, like the posters in the back and stuff. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's like cool. the actual things from the game. And then you could do it, you could have just put it as like one of them is like in the window and have that like mm -hmm. stinger sound effect that's in the game, because it's actually a cool sound effect. And have one of their yeah. faces like illuminated and have him be like, what the fuck and close a door? And then have them yeah. go back and like, that's how he figures it out. But no, they had to be like, I, it bothers me so much that the animatronics <laughs> just teleport. Like I yeah. get in the game, they technically teleport, but that's because it's like, oh, I wasn't checking that cam. So he moved really quick, but it was mm -hmm. like, you're on the stage. No, now Bonnie's in one of the broom closets and kills a guy in there. And now they're gone as well as the body and the blood. It's like, what? Yeah. And then, like, Golden Freddy, like, teleports, or Foxy, I can't remember which one it is, just teleports into the house at the end, kills the ant. And then it's like, sorry, we need to take a taxi to get back. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and they never go back to the ant! No, they, they don't! She just That's fucking so dies! Funny. And Mike is just winds up at the end and is like, whatever you're doing, Mike, keep it up. It's like, yeah, my... My preparing <laughs> sister is dead in my hallway. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> no one ever addresses it. How did no one come to his house and is like, there's a dead body here. What's going on? Did he dispose yeah. of it? <laughs> because also, unless, I, I mean, it's heavily assumed that she is dead. It's not yeah. like, but it's. It doesn't make any sense because in the situation that he was in, she was trying to take away his sister. Yeah. It would make a lot of sense that he would kill her. Not only... So it's like, yeah, is he going to be framed for this crime? And there's dead bodies at the pizzeria that he's taking care of. Yeah. But also the whole subplot of her trying to take the daughter or the sister is so dumb because it's like... What? She's well off. She can afford a lawyer. Obviously, he's not a good lawyer, but yeah. she like wears nice clothes. She has a job. Why would she need the sister? Why does she want the sister? She's a bad parent. She doesn't care. And it's not like getting the sister brings in like $14,000 a month or something. <laughs> That's the thing that I was confused about because it's uh, he's talking to the, the doctor or whatever. Yeah. And he's like, the only reason she wants her is for the, the check from the state every month. And I was like, if that's true, they should have made the aunt like a white trash, like blah, blah, blah. Like, why did they make her look like this, like well off, like rich white lady? Yeah. Where it's just like, oh, like you don't seem like you need that check from the state. It was yeah. just weird. And if, if she does need that check from the state and it is bringing in that much money, why does Mike need a nighttime job? <laughs> Shouldn't he be getting <laughs> loads of money then from the sister? <laughs> I don't know. It and then sense. they're just like, ah, oh, we'll kill her because we needed a babysitter to come in after the other girl died. So you come in, you'll get killed, and then we'll just never address it again. It feels like yeah. the scene's missing, that maybe there's a longer version of it. And that's, it's, it's, some of those things, it's like, I get that the movie's for the fans, and that's cool, and the people, I did meet a lot of fans afterwards who did just really enjoy the movie, and they just turned off their brains and they watched it, and that's fine. But there's yeah. some, like, basic-ass filmmaking language in this movie that's just thrown out the window to be like, ah, it doesn't really need to make sense. The audience, no, we're making it for the audience, so they don't really care that stuff has to make sense. We just need to get to the points we need to get to. Because it's the same with fucking William Afton showing up at the end, and I hate... That he, I'm being very, I'm being very heated about this. I don't actually care yeah. that much. I'm just, no. this is being played up for fun. Again, but, for Sean and I both, we both had the same, the same sentiment for the movie, which was, it was fine. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's like, like a six out of ten. I, I'm glad I saw it, but yeah, I don't like that he said, I always come back at the end. Because everyone is like, I know. everyone's like, yeah, he said the line, but he doesn't know he comes back yet. He hasn't been killed yet. He doesn't know that he yeah. always comes back. 
He should have no. said, I'll be back <laughs> or something. Uh -huh. But not, I'll, I always come back. Because the audience is like, yeah, he does. But it's like, that hasn't happened yet. You don't always come back yet. <laughs> what do you mean you always come back? And even if it's like, oh, well, there's lore from the books that implies that he always comes back or something like that. It's like in the movie that it's contained in, it's not implied that he's ever gone anywhere. It's like, what do you mean you'll always yeah, come back? Where'd you go? He's, he's a normal man. Yeah. In this movie, in, up until the very, very end. <laughs> and even then, it's like, I really don't like the spring lock scene, because I was actually kind of looking forward to that, because that's a cool thing in the game where he's, like, twitching, and in the trailer, the first time I saw it, I thought that was cool. And then you find out how it happens, and it's all, like, spring locks that's, like, pincing, pincering him, and he's twitching and all fucked up. And then in the movie, it's, like, it's just, like, giving him a big, hard hug. And he's, like, Ooh. Big hug. <laughs> Big hug. This movie was PG-13, right? Yeah, but not in England. It was 15s. I We went oh. up to the thing to, like, show our tickets, and, like, a whole family got turned away because the kids weren't old enough to be able to watch it. They were, like, there with parents, but it was, like, 15 oh. or nobody. So there was people oh. actively being turned away at the door because they were hurt. They kept hearing it was PG-13 everywhere, but... Which I, I don't, I don't see why. I thought that you could go into any movie as a minor as long as you're with a, an adult i mean that's what the pg part of it is if it's just 15 it's not pg 15 it's just 15. oh because pg is parental guidance or parental guardian or something like that yeah i didn't know that you guys even had that rating system i mean i'm sure it's different but it's similar enough that people were being turned yeah. away and there was like interesting two two younger people in front of us that they were asked for their id and then we went up and it's like, am I too old to be here? FNAF, please. <laughs> Which is crazy because a lot of the people that are like 15, <laughs> if you started mm -hmm. with this series, it's like eight years ago. It's like you're a oh. kid when this came out. Whoa. Eight or yeah. nine years ago is when this started. So if you're like into it at that, God, yeah. you're a baby when this came out. Yeah, I, as far as, um, as far as like, fan servicey stuff. I just kind of wish that there was more of it. Um, yeah, because some people complained that it was just fan service, but I'm like, well, it didn't really have anything else. It didn't have anything for general audiences to want to watch. So yeah, just fill it no. with fan service then. Yeah. It was like trying um, to appease both sides and then didn't appease any of them, which I'll point out that Scott Cawthon is the creator of this whole franchise. He wrote the screenplay and not only that, but I've, I can't remember where I've heard the stories or where I've read them, but even Jason Blum, who owns Blumhouse, said that Scott Cawthon kept turning away directors and kept turning away screenplays and kept saying, mm -hmm. like, no, that person's not going to work for it. That screenplay's not going to work for it. And then wrote it himself. And it took eight years or, like, four years or whatever amount of years for the movie to come out. It's like, that's the best you could do? That's your yeah. script that you were like, that script's not going to work. This is the yeah. script. <laughs> I thought it was so weird because the movie was in development for such a long time, and then all of a sudden it was like, it's coming out! It yeah. Like, oh, okay. And even I for sure thought it was like never going to come out. Jason Blum, in an interview, said that I had to just kind of do what Scott said or he would have thrown me off the movie as well. So it's like, Scott was kind of like a tyrant with this franchise, which I, yeah. I get if you have like a very specific vision for it. You created the whole franchise. But then the movie comes out, and that's that. You're turning away stuff for that. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I don't know. It's when you're getting into like film and stuff. There's other people that can do the job way better because they work in the film industry. And so. yeah, it's it's a bit naive to think that because you made the franchise, because the the story he's telling in the games is great. But that doesn't yeah. always just immediately translate to a movie because it's a different skill set. No. Even though he's written books, I've never read them. I don't know what his writing is like. But it's like, you you still need to trust other people with that. Because yeah. the way the movie ended up, it felt like someone who didn't 100% understand the lore or the universe and like watched MatPat videos and then made a movie. Which MatPat's yeah. videos are very thorough and you can do that. But it, it didn't feel like the guy who created the franchise wrote the story. <laughs> Yeah. No, it really didn't. And I know that we're being very nitpicky right now, which is going to segue into my next little bit. But that's the point is I want to be 
because it's kind of fun. Uh, yeah, because there's nothing thought, else. There's, I mean, we'll talk about some positives later. Yeah. I thought that the writing and the dialogue was so bad. <laughs> there yeah. were so many times people saying stuff where I was like, no one talks like that. The fucking and cop I, lady being like, oh, let's talk about the pillow fort scene in a second. But there she was like, oh, hey, it's God. so fun. I'm, oh, so you've met them. They're cool, right? I'm glad your sister's here to enjoy this. And then five minutes later, it's like, if you bring her back here again, I'm going to shoot you. <laughs> it's so weird. And like, I don't, I don't want to shit too hard on the individual um actors and stuff but i i didn't <laughs> i thought that her acting in particular was like oh it really sounds like you're reading lines yeah cause she's and, a good uh, actress she was in you season one and i really like her in that oh, show okay, yeah because i was like what do i know you from and then we looked it up afterwards but she's a good actress did scott direct it as well no uh emma Oh, I forget her second name. It's like Emma Tamlin or something like that. I, I had never mm. heard of the lady before. Yeah, Emma Chamberlain directed it. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, but no, he didn't direct it. I'm sure he was on set and like helped out a lot, though. Ethan, I've got a very special sponsor today. A new sponsor. We haven't had this one before. A new sponsor? I love a new sponsor. Are you really excited for it? Show me your excited I face. I got this one I just for you. I'm so excited for new sponsor. I can't wait to personally get the thing that this this new sponsor offers. What are well, they, who is it? This sponsor is nuts.com. Like nuts? Nuts? Yeah, like, like hazelnuts, pecans, peanuts. Oh. Sean, you know that I'm you know that I'm allergic to, to peanuts, right? Like Did you uh Like how allergic though? Like I'll die. If I eat them. Nuts.com is your one-stop shop for freshly roasted nuts, dried fruits, sweets, pantry staples, like specialty flowers and more. Their white selection means there's something for everyone. There's something for everyone, guys. And I'm sure that their nuts are quality and a top priority. They roast their nuts and they pop their corn the same day that it ships. So they reach you deliciously fresh. I'm sure it's really good. Dude, if you were ever to get allergic to any peanuts, it's the nuts.com peanuts. Those those <sighs> are fresh, they're savory, they're so God. good. They're simply too good. They are too good. They are so good that in some cases they'll kill you if you're me. It, well, at this part it says uh, ad lib some of your personal experience of getting the nuts from nuts.com. I assume that you couldn't get them because it'll kill you. Oh man, I got so many nuts from nuts.com and let me tell you, they're some of the best nuts I've never had before. They got all of the nuts and they have such nutty flavors. It says speak, you know? speak to the quality of the products you tried and the variety on their website. Oh man, the quality of these nuts, I've never had nuts that were of this quality before. You're gonna love In my fact, nuts. You're gonna love them. They've got the best nuts that you can put in your mouth. And I did. Go to nuts.com. Uh, you can get a, new customers get a free gift with purchase and free shipping on orders of $29 or more at nuts.com slash brain. I feel like it's a bit unfortunate that you're allergic to them. And, I mean, you can still read it out though, right? Yeah. See, if you go to nuts.com slash brain, you'll get a free gift and free shipping. I can't do anything with the gift um, because it's probably nut related, but. Um. But you can! Go to nuts.com, baby! Have you seen that photo? I think it was either like Daco or Raspowski that tweeted it that picture of Scott in the ball pit. <laughs> no! <laughs> oh my god, let me find it because it is wild. Um, I'm yeah, just gonna I thought... Google Scott Cawthon ball. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find it? Yeah, what a weird it's, picture. It's so weird. <laughs> it's so odd. It looks like a fucking uh, missing kid poster. It does. It's so weird. Um, But yeah, I there was a lot of stuff where I was just like, eh, yeah, whatever. I don't really... Yeah, it's one of those movies that like it knows where it wants to get, but it doesn't really want to put in the effort to get to it properly. Which the only other movie I can compare to is Morbius. 
has the exact same problem where it's like, we need two characters to kiss. It, it, people know how characters kiss in movies and the tropes to get to it. So we'll just do it and not do any of that mm. cliche stuff. And Five Nights at Freddy's is way better than Morbius. <laughs> Don't get I'm, me wrong. I'm wondering how they're, because they're obviously setting it up for m multiple films. Yeah. Um, and so I'm I'm wondering how they're going to segue into, because I'm assuming they're setting Vanessa up to do the whole Vanny thing. I, I don't know, because Vanny is a cop or a security person in Security Breach, mm -hmm. right? And then I think having her be called Vanessa was just kind of like a like an Easter egg. I don't think she actually is Vanny from that story. But is, isn't she, though? Isn't she, isn't it revealed in one of the endings of Security Breach that, like, she takes the helmet off and it's Vanessa? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I don't know if she is that Vanessa or they just called her Vanessa oh. to be like, there's a Vanessa in FNAF somewhere, we'll just call you Vanessa because that's fun. I, I mean, maybe okay, they'll do that. Yeah, yeah. Maybe she'll turn into her father's daughter and be like... Yeah, there was one there was one line she said that Evelyn laughed at and she like turned to me and like repeated it was that it's not just their souls in the animatronics. It's their bodies. It's like yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got that. <laughs> like we I we know. Um I will say the the scene with the girl getting cut in half was really that fucking was cool. cool. That I, was the only time in the whole movie where I went, ooh. <laughs> yeah, because everything else was like people were kind of being killed off camera or like a cupcake was biting the dude's head and it was a bit silly. And I was like, oh, okay, yeah. that's what we're in for. And then she got killed and I was like, whoa, you're like the girl that has like inner turmoil. Normally in a movie like that, she's the one that's like, no, I don't want to do this. This is wrong. And then she goes back and helps Mike and is the babysitter yeah. again. But they just chopped her in half. And I was like, fuck yeah. All rules yeah, are off. Sweet. Let's go. And then they built that a pillow fort. Cool <laughs> the pillow fort thing was so weird. So, so weird. It, it was really I, weird at the time, but now I'm like, uh, it was kind of fun, I guess. But I think my problem with it is that I, I liked the scene in a vacuum on its own, but it was like, mm -hmm. we got someone chopped in half. And then suddenly it's like, yeah. oh no, now we're building a pillow fort. And I was like, oh, we've just flipped the movie now. And now we're going into like silly territory and... Some yeah. movies do that, like movies like Malignant or like Saw kind of does it sometimes. It's like, I get that. I'm in for that. That's fun. But then it like flipped back and it's like, oh no, now we're evil again. And I, it just didn't feel like it knew what it wanted to be. That was the thing that I hated was there, there didn't feel like there was any stakes once that happened. Cause it was just like, yeah. okay, well these, these aren't going to hurt them now for at least a little bit because they like Abby. And so now they're like cool big animatronics to just hang out with and so it took out all of the scare factor at all yeah because we finally got people being killed on screen by them apart from the guy at the very very beginning but after that i was like okay now it's like settled in let's go it's a slasher movie now but then like the body count never it didn't actually go anywhere after that it was just those people killed and then no one else was killed except for the ant and Afton didn't even die at the end because he always comes back. Did I... I've already forgotten. At the very beginning, the first scene with the security guard, it shows the little cupcake guy, doesn't it? Coming through the vent because he's like yeah, yeah, pushing yeah, yeah. back. Yeah. I thought that was dumb. Yeah. So I was like, you're showing him right out of the gate? Yeah. Like, uh, okay, whatever. Yeah, I think... I think there was parts of them that didn't want to go too cliche with like horror tropes. So they tried to subvert that a little bit, but then it all ended up being very like straightforward anyway and very tropey regardless. But I'm like, I wish it was like, you see like a, a half a frame of one, like walking out of frame and like the, yeah. the Jaws method where it's like, like don't show the beast yet and do that right at the end and like reveal a lot of stuff. Like, just do it, like, really straightforward slasher, like, who is the killer kind of thing. Yeah. I guess you can't really because it's obvious what's killing them, but I think you can still do it and have it be fun. I wanted them to lean into it more. Yeah, I wanted it to be scarier. I also hate the eyes in the movie because people yeah, saw the trailer and they were that. like, it's not that scary. And I was like, yeah, it might work in the movie, though. It's not that big a deal. And then... 
when they actually showed them in the movie, I'm like, yeah, it wasn't actually as scary as the game. Like, they're way scarier in the no. game. And then yeah. Springtrap shows up at the end, and he's, like, like half in the frame, and he has the knife in his hand. I'm like, that's scary. That's cool looking. Yeah. And he just had, like, the two little white eyes. I'm like, do that more. Uh -huh. That was cool. The, the one shot that I was like, okay, that was cool, but it was really silly looking, was when they do the, like kid reveal of who Foxy is where they go to the curtains and it's just like a kid standing there yeah. like in the shadows and I was like that looks so weird and then he like <laughs> slides back in and comes back out and it's Foxy and yeah. I was like I get what you're doing but that just looked really goofy which was he Foxy because when they did the scene of the kids in the dream it was like five kids but four animatronics so it's always like oh who's the fifth one it's like is the cupcake one but then all of them yeah. had, like, one of them had bunny rabbit ears. The other kid had a hook in his hand. But that wasn't... Yeah. I think the other kid is... Because I kept being like, is that Freddy? Because he's, like, the main kid we keep seeing. And then it showed yeah. that he went into the Foxy Cove and then came out as Foxy. And I was like, or is he Golden Freddy? I don't know who this fucking kid is. Who is who? I did like that they who showed Golden Freddy. That was cool. I like Golden yeah, Freddy. that's fun. Um, um, yeah, let's, let's get into the positives. Well... One more thing that I wanted to point out that was a little silly is that the, he has control over the kids and they're doing his bidding and all that. I, I can't remember how that actually works in the game other than they possess the animatronics. Part. Maybe he has control over them or influences them or something. But I don't like that the thing that stopped them was her pinning a picture on the wall. Yeah, I thought that was dumb. Like they did the whole like... Almost like throwing a flare into the gasoline kind of scene, like the yeah. slow motion, but it was like her pinning a crudely drawn <laughs> crayon picture on the wall. And then they're like, oh, right, he killed us. Whoops. Whoops. Okay. Like, it was. Guys, see you later. It's, I like the thing of them turning on him and like dragging him off at the end. That was cool. That's kind of like from the lore as well. But the way they got there was a little silly. But yeah, yeah it's positives. I, I'm, I'm hoping that they because they at least have i want to say two more yeah i i imagine they're getting greenlit for two more i think scott himself said that he's trying to do three and now it's the it FNAF already made its money trilogy. back and it's doing really really well and it's i think it's on track to make yeah. like a hundred million already so yeah. i i'm pretty sure they're going to do two more hopefully they can use some criticism from this movie to make the yeah. next two because five nights at freddy's two i think is the scariest of the bunch that that's the peak uh in terms of like all the elements together i think that's the peak in terms of like designs lore withered bonnie's my favorite animatronic looks cool you could do that stuff but yeah i still like the vibe of fnaf one the best fnaf one's yeah. a great fucking game it um, is i think when it came out i was a bit on my high horse about it because i had such because people are, I've seen people react to my tweets being like, well, Jack doesn't really like horror. And I'm like, are you kidding me? It's my favorite genre. It's like yeah. horror movies and horror games are like my two favorite things. The only thing higher than that maybe is sci-fi. Like, what are you talking <laughs> I thought, about? I thought you were going to say porn. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, have you seen any of the stuff that I've like written, directed, like acted in myself? Like, I know I haven't done, like, a crazy The only thing better is horror than horror is pussy. <laughs> Hell yeah, baby. It's like, of course I love horror. And that's why I'm, like, more harsh on these things, because I know what good horror should be. And then I'm like... Mm -hmm. It was like with FNAF. I was like, ah, it's just... People are just playing it for views, and it's like, it's not that good. And then the more I played it in my spare time later on, I was like, no, nah, this is actually just really good, and, like, changed the whole landscape yeah. of horror games. Um, yeah. I will say, in the movie... Josh Hutcherson is, like, acting his ass off. Yeah, like, I thought he did a great job. The material he was given, you can go back and forth on whether it was good or not. But what he did in the movie, I thought he was fucking great. Yeah, I thought he was awesome. I was I sad that he, he didn't good. disguise himself with his cake skills into the pizzeria. Man, that would have been Games. sick. <laughs> he did it. He did it in the in the ball pit. He just put like, <laughs> balls all over his face. Yeah, there was a scene. I thought that shot was cool. There was a scene where the girl goes down into the ball pit, and me and Evelyn were like, "She's going to do the apocalypse now," where she comes up like covered in blood. <laughs> that been awesome. Because that that idea of being chased by the animatronics 
Again, I don't really like seeing them move around because you can tell there's no weight to them. When he like crushed yeah. the plastic ball with his foot, I'm like, oh no, a plastic ball. <laughs> like, yeah. it, I don't think that'll crush my head. But no. you can tell like there's no weight in it that it's like a puppet. But the idea of like having to hide from them is really scary. Have them like, I want to see them like hide behind like an arcade cabinet in the shadow and you just see like this part of their face and like one white yeah. eye. And like the hook sticking out, like do more of that. That would be really cool. Mm -hmm. You have the animatronics. They did that one shot in the cameras that's directly from the game, which is the side profile of like Bonnie, Freddy, Chica. Yeah. And they did it like one to one perfect. And I was like, oh, that's so cool. I want them to lean into that more. I want the next movie to be scary. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah, there was there was one other security camera shot where it's both Chica and Bonnie just, like, looking up directly into mm -hmm. the camera. And I was like, oh, that's, that's cool looking. Yeah, there's stuff like that from the game. Like, I, I would have loved to see him go through the cameras and, like, replicate some of the shots from the game. Because there's certain shots, like... Yeah. Everyone who's played the first game now knows the cameras in their brain. Uh, well, mm -hmm. if you've played them a lot, but there's like one shot of like Bonnie looking right up at the camera where they're like close to the camera. And like, I would have loved to see that like replicated yeah. in the movie. There's a lot of like really cool scenes or like Chica in the middle of the party hat area with like just the cupcake mm -hmm. in her hand. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of potential <laughs> for that stuff in it. There's the one scene where they're putting the cupcake into the vent and mm. I wasn't sure what was happening because Chica bends down, yeah. but it looks like Chica's bowing. And I was like, what is she <laughs> doing? What's yeah, don't happening? don't show the move like that. Just cut yeah. that part out. Just show that like, oh, it happened. We don't need to actually see it happen. Um, yeah, as far as positives, though, I think that the set design um, and the animatronics were really, 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 really well done. Yeah, I think they, they were perfect. I don't think you can do that better than they did. I mean, you hire Jim Henson, yeah. you get Jim Henson. It's like yeah. the best in the business. Um, and I thought Josh did a good job acting. I also thought that the the actress that played Abby was really good. Child actors are usually kind of hit or miss, and I thought that yeah. she was pretty good. She had a couple of moments that like took me out of it, but it's like, it's a kid. You can't really be too harsh on kids. I thought the lawyer actor was funny as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah. like, I shouldn't be listening to any of this. Also, the ant is full, like, I want that child for custody for reasons that we don't actually hear from her mouth, but she's like, kill him if you have to. It's like, whoa, lady, hold on. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. we can just frame him to look like he's negligent. You don't have to kill uh -huh. him. Yeah, also, he's your nephew. Yeah. <laughs> what the fuck is and wrong And then she with shows you? up and he's like, uh, babysit for me. And she's like, okay, we still need to have a conversation, though. And it's like, lady, you were talking about killing him. Like yeah. half hour ago. <laughs> um, yeah. I will say we got to see Corey and Matt Pat in the movie. Yeah, that was well, very fun. It's like Daku and John Wolf and Razbowski and those guys and 8-Bit Ryan are in it technically, but you don't actually see them in the movie because they're the employees of the month thing. Oh. But in the movie itself, they smash it and you can't actually see the pictures ever. The scene happens so quick, but the way it's angled as well, you can't, it's just being reflected. You can't actually see them, which is a shame. Uh, I thought Corey did great. I was, yeah. talk I was talking to him a little bit about it because I was asking him about something else. And I was like, hey, you were great in the movie. And he was like, man, I was so nervous, but it was really fun to do. And I'm glad I did it. And he went and saw it with like his whole family. And that's, that's a cool thing to be able to do. Even if the movie's yeah. awful, like the fact that you were in it is really cool, I think. Yeah, that's sweet. Um, I don't yeah, like that Matt, Matt Pat cameo. said that's just a theory. <laughs> I like, I like the place erupted when he came on screen, which was cool. Yeah. It's cool to know someone in the movie and then have everyone in the audience go like, "Yeah, he's here!" But then did they said, everyone freak out when he said it's a theory? Everyone kind of groaned because <laughs> it's like that's perfect. It's cool to see him in it, but to just have it be so on the nose is... Yeah. You might as well have someone just say, like, what are you doing, spending five nights at Freddy's? <laughs> um, that a perfect line. Vanessa should have said that. Yeah. This is our fifth night at Freddy's. Shit goes down. <laughs> but, see, like, Matt Pat is a good actor. 
Like he he has theater experience and like seeing him in the movie, if you don't actually know who Matt Pat is in terms of Five Nights at Freddy's, I don't think he pulls you out of the experience whatsoever. And Corey did no. a great job as well. Corey's not Yeah. Corey doesn't even have that kind of background and he doesn't act ever. And he did a great job. Yeah. He did a great job. Yeah. It's very fun. His his scene might not make a whole lot of sense of having a giant animatronic in the back. It's like why would a taxi yeah. driver be like <laughs> Why do we always get the weirdos? It's like, dude, you would not take that fair. <laughs> and he got the after credit scene or the oh yeah the mid credit scene. There's an after after. Oh, but, is there an after after? Yeah, we, we oh. didn't stay for it, but I heard afterwards it's someone spelling out "come find me." It's probably Spring Trap or Afton or something. But I'll, it's C U M. Come and that's it. <laughs> it just says come. But yeah, Corey gets scared by the balloon boy toy, which also makes no sense. Why is that in his car? I don't. <laughs> Why do these things teleport know. everywhere? It's like, and then if you're able to teleport out and kill people, why don't you ever leave ever until that point? Yeah. Yeah, they could be kidnapping kids all over the place. Yeah, you don't have to. You, you went to Abby's house and I'm sure people would be like, well, that's because they had a connection and... I, I want to talk about the subreddit for FNAF right now because... Oh, God. I, I have I've been, not looked at that. I've been very curious to see what their reactions to the movie are. And it's 95% of them are talking about the critic reviews and how upset they are that... Like, I get it. It's like something you're super, super into and then it finally comes out. I, I was trying to think of like good examples for myself. Um, other than like... Dark Souls 2 or something like that. Like something you're a mega fan of for a really long time. And then it finally comes out and you've been waiting so long and you're, you want it to be great. And some people went into it and they were like, it's everything I wanted. I turned off my brain. I just watched it. It was fine. Some people don't really care if it's good or not, but there's a lot of people you can tell it's like their first major disappointment, but they don't really want to admit it to themselves. <laughs> yeah. Like it's, it's okay if the movie's bad, but you still want to like it and you still want to talk about it positively. That's just... Yeah being a fan of things. Every now and then something's going to come out that disappoints you. And it, it's also okay to like shitty movies. There's some movies that have terrible ratings. We were watching Van Helsing the other day. That movie has a <laughs> terrible rating and I fucking love it. And it's yeah. one of those things I'm like, I can see why people don't like it. it. It really doesn't really make that much sense and there's a bunch of shit that's kind of over the top and whatever. Yeah. But it's one of those things that's like the critics are wrong. They did the same to Mario and the audience love it. And it's like... Okay, I get that. You can't just say, like, critics suck when it's not in your favor, and then critics are great when it is in your favor. Yeah, because also, it's like, you're going to the movie as a fan. You're there to try and be entertained, and you can have your, like, oh, that was a really fun movie. Yeah. A critic's job is to go in and critique the film. Yeah. And be like, okay, this was bad because of X, Y, Z. They, they, like, they watch it in a vacuum of, like, I'm not li listening to prior knowledge about the games. I'm just going in to merit it on a movie on its own merits. Which, yeah, that's exactly. why it is the way it is. And that's why the audience score is so high. But it's also kind of weird to say like critics don't matter because they don't care about the franchise but then also be like the audience score matters and it's like you're just kind of inflating it at the same time in the opposite direction it's like the truth is somewhere in the middle of both of these yeah. scores yeah because if i was if i was going in to see this movie with no prior knowledge of five nights at freddy's i don't know how much i would have to say about it on a yeah. posit in a positive light. You'd also be like, why are people I... cheering for the waiter in the diner? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like that's super confused. And uh, critics also most of the time, as someone who's gone to interview people for movies, I you have to go see it with reviewers the day before. So it's like, yeah. you're going to see the movie in a vacuum in a specific place that doesn't have a crowd of people around you. So you can't even like, you can't feed off that energy either. You're just kind of like watching it. It's like the way you watched it today, like on your own. Yeah. So you're kind of experiencing it a different way. So, mm -hmm. but it, it is interesting to see, cause some people came out of the movie and like recognized me and were asking for pictures and everything. And what, they were like, what did you think of the movie? And I was like, oh yeah, it was good. And I was like, I'm not going to like shit on you. You're dressed as one of the characters. Yeah. <laughs> and they were like, I thought it was amazing. And I'm like, I'm glad you had that experience. Like that's why the movie's yeah. being made. 
it's fun. Yeah, and it's I also because when I tweeted about it because the movie wasn't out fully yet, they put that up on the subreddit, being okay. like, "This is what Jack thought," and I'm like, first of all, you shouldn't be listening to anybody else for your opinions on the movies. If they yeah. agree with you and critics give it a ninety percent, then great, you get the validation you want. But it also shouldn't be the like. <laughs> Well, they didn't like the movie. Does that mean I shouldn't like the movie? That's like the worst attitude you can have. It's the same with it's games. It's so bad. Yeah. It's just like, no, you, you can go and have your own enjoyment. In it. Yeah. And then, again, that's why I want to go and see it again in theaters. Because watching it alone in my bedroom this morning, I was just... You know, there's no, there's no energy for me other yeah. than when the girl gets cut in half and I went, ooh. <laughs> that was the, Ooh, that was the this, this only is, audible thing that is came out of Is this cinema? Hmm, I, hmm. Detecting cinema. Oh, wow. Um, um, but it, yeah, I want to go and see it in theaters and like feed off the energy of other people because that, I think that's what will make it really fun. Yeah, it did make it... I think I would have liked it a lot less if I didn't actually go to see it in the theater. Um, yeah. And again, I didn't hate it. It was It was fine. It's, I'm not like a diehard fan, so obviously I'm not going to like get giddy over like the tiniest things. I, I know that we're supposed to be talking about like positives and stuff a little bit, but another thing I wasn't, I was super excited going into this for Matthew Lillard. And again, he's, he's a bookend character mm. in this film. He's there in the beginning and he's there right at he's the so end. He's so good. Not I, in this movie. <laughs> I, I was about to say, like, I was like kind of disappointed. I was like, oh man, I wanted him to be a, a bit more. I don't know. And I was like, yeah. okay, whatever. I almost feel um, like he should have been the one stalking them throughout the movie. Also, Not his fucking line of, I got to kill your brother. Now I'm going to kill you. Don't you see? It's symmetry. And I was like, <laughs> what? What? What, what do you mean symmetry? You're just killing two people from the same family. That's coincidence. It's not... And it's it's like... If anything, because I knew... killing, one of the, killing the brother and not killing the other brother is symmetry. Because now it's like it's... balanced. It's in symmetry. It's... Yeah. It's just... It was like, okay, dude. I don't think that you really... Ca I had a very hard time believing that he would care about the older brother that much i don't know it just yeah. felt like shoehorned in and it was just like okay also sure. matthew Lillard, Lillard is fucking great he'll always be like Stu mocker in my head from scream yeah he even did his scream like wiping the blood off the knife which is a little uh -huh. on the nose but as a huge scream fan i'm like yeah it's fun yeah get him yeah. Stu. but it again you just didn't use him enough he's like in the beginning and he's fun on the phone and he does say one hello when he calls him about the job and i'm like Say it again. Do it again. <laughs> Do it again. Come on. Um, but um, then he disappears for the whole movie and then comes back and then it's like, he's my father. It's like, well, yeah. Duh. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, I thought that it just wasn't believable that he would care about Mike because yeah. he he wasn't like chasing him enough for the job. He was like, well, here's my card. If you uh, have a change of heart, call me back. Yeah, it's, it's like, leaving okay. a lot of stuff up to chance. Yeah. Um, and also his stuff with like, it, it, there's just not enough exposition for why he's the bad guy. And that's probably why a lot of people who don't know anything about FNAF, it's it's made with the idea in mind that you know the FNAF lore. And maybe that's a downside of Scott writing it because everyone's like, oh, it's Afton, we get it. But for someone who doesn't know any of this stuff, it's kind of, it feels undeserved for him to show up as the villain. Uh huh. I just had a horrible realization. Oh no. So you know how in the movie he's trying to find his brother and blah, 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 blah. Uh-huh. Afton kills his brother. Yeah. What What if in FNAF 2 he meets one of the other animatronics and realizes that it's his brother? <laughs> he could. <laughs> that very well could happen. Because that's, oh that, that's another thing about the lore is that like where the kids go missing and who goes missing and how they go missing and all of that stuff is kind of important as to who's in the animatronics at what point. But him, like, stealing... What's the brother's name? Greg? Garrett. Garrett? I was going to say Gregory. <laughs> Gregory. Um, I think him kidnapping the brother and then having that not revealed as to, like, what happened, why his motivations for doing it, the background of any of that, 
where the kid ended up. Like, that kind of stuff, I feel like, is important to FNAF lore, because it's like, oh, these kids were kidnapped here, and the Bite of 87 happened at this place, and stuff got shut down, and... It, it's really weird to be like, the first game came out, we didn't have any pre-context of what the pizzeria was. Then the second one came out, you found out it was a prequel, and then you found out, like, oh, there's way more lore, they kept adding to it, and whatever... But now that the movie is out, you're making the movie with the knowledge that people know that he's William Afton. Afton doesn't even really exist as that character in the first game. Yeah. But you're... It's a really weird sort of balancing act where you're making the movie as the screenplay with people knowing who this character is and they have all this prior knowledge of what's happening so you care about the character a bit more and it's all deserved in that way. But then you're kind of not talking about any of the previous pizzerias and where Afton came from and the fact that this is like what like the third pizzeria or something that this franchise has existed for many many times before this and always kids go missing and mm -hmm. it's kind of like having their cake and eating it at the same time or like you you can't have like prior knowledge about a character in certain scenarios but not have any of the stuff that comes with him any of the baggage that comes with him with the other pizzerias they're, and all the other characters they're having their cake and fucking it too yes it's really what the analogy is yeah you're having your cake and you're just shitting all over it <laughs> it's like you can't have it one way and not the other way at the same time it's kind of like picking and choosing what parts of the lore you want to put in which I guess is fine. I guess it doesn't really matter. But I I feel like people are such sticklers for the lore of FNAF stuff that it's like, you kind of need to talk about the old pizzerias and bites of 87 and that kind of stuff if you are going to bring in that version of Afton. Which I, I don't think they should have done. I think they should have just made the first movie the first game. And then yeah. hint at like a bigger villain. Hint at an Afton. Hint at all that kind of stuff. But don't do the Springtrap stuff already. That's the third game third movie like show us all of that later i'm gonna say such a 2020s statement i think that fnaf would have been better suited as a series than a film because of the yeah. mass amount of lore that it has um i think it is also fun to have it just be a movie and blah blah blah, blah. but i think that <clears throat> the people who are really really into the lore it would have been better suited in a longer yeah, form thing. I think like the that. budget would have benefited more from a show as well. Because you have the one location of the pizzeria and like they most of the movie takes place there, but you can really like get your money's worth out of it for a show. Mm -hmm. Um and Last of Us has shown us that shows for video games work way better. Way better, um, yeah. Because then you yeah, you do get the lore build up a bit better. You get all the characters' backstories a bit more. Because the movie is mm -hmm. like we're going to deal with, like, a massive chunk of lore. Not even just from the first game, but multiple versions of the games. But also, we're going to have this whole side plot about his brother going missing, and we're going to spend way too much time on that instead of extrapolating the stuff that's needed to kind of, like, warrant why Afton shows up at the end as the bad guy. Yeah, I'm wondering for the future ones, one, like, how it's going to play out, but two, if they're going to lean into the lore more um they probably because should now they really should because i don't really know what the motivation for josh hutcherson's character would be all that much because in this one he's like i need to find out who killed my brother well he not, found out. not only that he was like is that person kidnapping a child time to go punch the shit out of him <laughs> until i almost kill him like i i get it you have huge trauma over your brother being kidnapped uh, but I feel like as a security guard and having like so much distance between what happened versus now, it's like, and you have your sister to take care of, it kind of feels like you went a bit overboard, like immediately out of nowhere. Well, here's a question. Who's going to hire, who's going to hire Josh to come back in the second one if Afton's not working his career job? See, this is the thing you have to figure out with FNAF is why does any of this stuff keep happening? You've had like three pizzerias closed where kids have died in them and gone missing. And somehow, I mean, Afton says it, you always come back. It's like somehow you keep getting this franchise. If kids got killed at Chuck E. Cheese, I'm pretty sure that franchise is done. <laughs> like it's over for oh, that. Oh man, and logistically, Afton's gonna come back as his weird non-human weird animatronic thing. Is he uh, still- He's called Springtrap. 
Oh yeah, that's right. Is he is but is is he still paying the bills for the place? Because eventually the city is going to seize the property back and probably uh, you, just demolish you don't, it. You don't need to worry about that. You don't need to worry about the logistics of it. The animatronics teleport. Vanessa isn't a street cop, beat cop. She just goes to the pizzeria all night every night and doesn't work <laughs> yeah. any other way. You don't need to wonder why he's working at the mall area and then he also has the pizzeria under control. But then he lures one guy with one kid there instead of just luring a bunch of kids there. It doesn't How need to make sense. How did he not get sued by that man? Exactly. How did that not happen? How does yeah. how does anything in the FNAF franchise ever make sense? Other than, I mean, it's ghost children inside animatronics killing people, so it doesn't really have to be realistic. But yeah, at some point, someone's going to seize the property. You're going to get your mains cut off. You water, your electricity. <laughs> I loved the line when uh, he's talking to Abby and he's like, so are they... Ghosts? <laughs> and she's like, uh-huh. He's like, okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> just, just weird. It's, it's, it's like, like, oh, right. okay. Let's build a pillow fort. <laughs> pillow fort. Whoa. I, I feel like they jumped the shark. The exact moment you can feel like the movie goes off the rails is when Bonnie gives the thumbs up. Ah, uh, I had the exact same thing. I was just like, what is going on? It's like, okay, we're fully like over the line on what is allowed in this movie at this point. Yep. Uh, it was very uh, funny. And we, we very, didn't even get Markiplier in the movie. I uh, know, everybody, everybody was like, no, he's gotta be. He's gotta yeah, be. It's, were it's were you asked to be in the film at all? No. But no? Would I, you I was there when Mark said he wasn't going to be in it because it was when he was shooting Iron Lung and I was on set for that. Where were you when Mark's, when Markiplier turned down <laughs> the Mark the fandom wall. fell? <laughs> <laughs> um, it's weird. I'm, I'm not going to say what it is, but we both know which character he was going to be in the movie or like mm. where he was going to be in the movie. So mm. it's, it's interesting to watch it now knowing that information, but yeah, um, yeah, it is funny seeing people go there. I did meet a fan at afterwards that was cosplaying as Markiplier to the FNAF movie, <laughs> which is funny. It's well, also I, sad I that he can... hasn't said anything about it yet. Like, has he even seen the movie? I don't think he's seen it. I think we can tell everybody, though. He was going to be the little sister. Yeah. Um, he yeah. was going He was going to be Mike Jr. And we're going to call him Markiplier. <laughs> <laughs> And he, and he was just going to walk around after Mike all the time, like right behind him, being like, "What's he doing?" <laughs> or I'm sorry, the whole, what's he doing? <laughs> the whole time, uh, he wasn't going to wear shoes, so you could just hear the little tip tap of his feet. Yeah, he was, he was actually was also going to be the singing for Foxy, so he was going to be dum dum diddly dum 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 dum. <laughs> so it was going to be a ten-minute sex scene at one point. <laughs> It's just dum dum diddly dum. dum, dum. <laughs> oh, hey, I'm <Chica>. gonna come, <laughs> Chica. Dum dum diddly dum. <laughs> oh, dude, that would have been a fucking great movie. <laughs> that would have been a banger, dude. We that been a literally. Banger. We should just make that. Hey, if yeah. Bloomhouse are out there and they're like, hey, some stuff didn't work, let's get new talent on. Me and Ethan will do the movie. I'll direct. Whoa. Ethan will be the DP. Uh-huh. Someone else can write it. Well, I, I, I'm not I'll, good at that. I'll also do the Foley for it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll do all the Foley work. Dude, yep. there wasn't even a fucking... There was no 6 a.m. cheering sound, the alarm sound. No. It, like, the movie starts with his clock. I can't even remember if it was the exact alarm clock sound. Like, put in the dun, uh, dun, dun, dun. Put that in the movie. Yeah. Put, when he's killed someone, put the screech in the movie. Yeah, didn't happen. Maybe they can't because the original Screech is actually from another old horror movie. Oh, is it? Yeah, if you search like Five Nights at Freddy's 1 original Scream, Five it's like Nights somebody, it's it's like a practical movie. It's like Immortigaunt or I can't remember what it's called. FNAF Scream reference. If you oh, listen no, to it, it's like the FNAF jump scare sound is like right in the middle of that screech uh it is from the 1981 british science fiction horror film 
Inseminoid. Inseminoid, not a mortigant. And you began with an I. Listen to it. Listen to it. Put it in the episode. Oh, oh. <laughs> Isn't that weird? Yeah. That is weird hearing the original. Because originally people found the files from the game and just, I was one of those people. I was like big into the theorizing of the first game, even though I publicly didn't talk about it. But I was the one that like, when I, I was also like, I went into the files and like listened to all the sound effects one by one. And then yeah. the, the jump scare sound was that. And I was like, whoa, it's like a kid screaming. That's really creepy. And it's like, oh, it wasn't. It was from a movie. <laughs> Because the, the Freddy, like, oh, 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 is just a kid slowed down. It's just kids oh, really? laughing slowed down, so it's really creepy. Um, <laughs> and it's shit like that. And I was like, man, that's cool stuff. I like that. The FNAF oh, 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 is actually Mark laughing sped up. <laughs> it's actually Mark <laughs> with his night terrors. <laughs> Um, but I, I wonder if they couldn't put that stuff in because it's from a movie already, so they can't sample it for another movie. I wonder if they or if they would have had to pay like legal fees for it. And they're like, dude, you used a bunch of sounds in the game that we can't use because there's a lot of money we'd have to pay over for licensing, and we're just not able to do that. Which is a shame because it's really obvious that th that stuff's all missing from the movie. Licensing costs a lot of money. So that's so that making a movie. That's true. In uh, in a sequence in the documentary, we originally used um, Bon. Uh, is it Gonzo or Bonzo? I can't remember now. By uh, the Ramones. Yeah. Um, it's the song that's like you got bigger pieces. Yeah. So anyway, uh, we went to Warner Brothers and we were like. Hello, we would like to license this song for this 40 seconds in the movie, please. Mm -hmm. And they went, okay, that'll be $20,000. Holy fuck. I was, like, I was like, okay, we're going to go find a different song. Thanks. Yeah, we're going to find something that sounds like that. It has the same please. energy, but we're not paying for that. No, thank you. Um, my, my brother did the score for the whole movie, and so because we originally edited it to that song, he was like, okay, well, I can just make a very derivative piece of music mm. uh, that's the same BPM and stuff. And so uh, he made Ronzo Goes to Pittsburgh, is the, <laughs> name of the, the track that he made for it. That, that, I noticed that a lot in, like, I rewatched a lot of The Simpsons recently, and they do that a lot, where it's just, it's like other characters and other music, but it's like the names are just different, and the music's yeah. slightly different. It's like, that's literally just Star Wars music, though. Yep. But it's like, you just change a few notes here and there, and it's transformative, baby. It's a new piece of music. That's true. Your brother's a genius. He's a genius. A genius. Um, well, but overall, FNAF movie, I think it's I think it's definitely worth a watch. I mean, um, we're here talking about it, so yeah. it's, it's it's doing something in the zeitgeist. I, I just have opinions of what I would do differently, because I genuinely wanted it to be better. I wanted it to be really yeah. good. And I feel like if you just make it a little more serious, a little more scary, like change the eyes of the animatronics to the spring trap ones at the end, have them like loom around corners more, kind of like stare at you more, make them feel lifeless instead of, they made the animatronics feel like there was kids in them, which I feel yeah. like is not how the games are. The animatronics feel scary despite there being kids in them. Yeah. So it's like, that's what's scary about them is that they're like mannequins and they just kind of like stand around staring at you and you don't know what they're going to do. And they didn't do any of that for the movie. And I feel like that's a huge missed opportunity. The, mo the movie's yeah. made for kids and you can see it, but the FNAF audience is mainly kids. Yeah, I think that was my biggest critique of the film is it wasn't scary at all. Yeah. And it's based off of a horror game. Um, yeah. It was more uh, horror comedy than anything, but it also wasn't really. It's kind of in this weird nebulous space where it's not really any of those. Um, but if you like FNAF and you're really into the yeah. lore, you'll really like the movie. I think you'll get a kick mm -hmm. out of it. And any of you who have gotten a kick out of it, that's totally okay. You're allowed to yeah. enjoy that. There's so and many movies, shows, games that I fucking love and everyone else hates. And that's mm -hmm. totally cool. You don't have to justify yeah. it to anybody. 
Same way I don't have to justify why I didn't really like it, except I spent the last hour doing that. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, even though I didn't really like it, I'm still probably going to go and see it again in theaters because I'm like, I want to go and see it. Yeah, we have, we have some friends here that didn't see it. And I'm like, I kind of want to show you guys the movie. See what you guys yeah. think. Mm -hmm. But let us let us know. Let us it's, know your thoughts. It's cool to see an indie horror game get turned into a movie. I like that. Yeah. I like yeah. how far the franchise has come. And it's such a cultural phenomenon now that it's it's pretty impressive that that's where it is. Yeah. Uh, it's pretty cool. But yeah, um, too much plot, 3 out of 10. Didn't really care for it. Didn't really care for it. There was no 19 inches of Venom. No, Freddy's fast uh, Freddy's fast cock didn't show up once. A fight did break out though. <laughs> yeah, that was wild. I don't know what that was about. Fight uh, fights at fight Freddy's broke out in the in the in the theater. I started playing Spider-Man by the way. It's Ooh. so good so far. In the past few days I've only had a couple of hours to like sink into it, but every chance i get i'm like i want to i want to go play spider-man hell yeah the story's really it's, good i beeline that so bitch because well the side content is kind of repetitive like the first game so i was like i get it i don't really need to do these but the story was so good i was like i have to keep playing i have to keep going i can't do anything else yeah miles has got to write that essay yeah he's got it have you seen his suit online that everyone hates uh, the one with, like, the Adidas shoes mm -hmm. and stuff. And his hair showing. I have, yeah. That suit is uh, ass. And yeah, that's... not very... Not to spoil it for you or anything, that's his new suit. That's his, like, canonical new suit. Forever? Yep. I don't think it should be. Nope. He shows up in the game and it's like, what are you wearing? Also, I mean... Why is he not wearing Jordans? In everything else, he's wearing. Adidas probably Jordans. paid more. <laughs> yeah, but that's stupid. He should be wearing Jordans. Yeah, Jordans Ugh. are way cooler yeah. with his outfit. Yeah. Actually, um, yeah, even when you get the Spider Verse outfit, he's oh no, he doesn't. He doesn't wear Jordans with his full suit anymore, right? Mm, and he wears no. it with the like blue bomber hood. Yeah. Yeah. I think so. I've been playing Alan Wake 2. Ooh, how is it? And that game fucking rules. It's I've so good. I've never played Alan Wake 1. Yeah, a lot of this would go over your head then. You could play it, but there's so much referencing to the first game and to Control as well, because they share a universe. Is, um, uh, is Alan Wake 1 good? I've heard very mixed things. Not really. It's it's one of those games that I... That, that's like the FNAF movie. It's one of those things that I absolutely adore it. But I don't think it's a great video game. The The story's fun. The characters are fun. It's a bit too convoluted for its own good. The gameplay kind of sucks, though. It gets really repetitive after, like, an hour. Yeah. Because uh, he's... Alan Wake, he's, like, writing... He's an author. And he's, like... Isn't there stuff where he's, like, writing about himself? And it's, like, jumping yeah. back and forth. And like... he, he goes to a place called Bright Falls to get out of writer's block. But then it turns out that Bright Falls has an energy that can bring stories to life. So the stuff he's writing and stuff from his old stories starts coming to life and attacking him. But mm -hmm. now, since Control came out, they've, they said that stuff in Alan Wake is stuff linked to Control... And it's like an energy source at Cauldron Lake that's doing it called the Dark Presence. So he's like trying to get out of it. So he's like writing his way out of the dark place. So it gets very he complicated. Write a, he should write a better FNAF movie. He should write uh, just the Dark Presence killed itself and I lived happily ever after. I don't know why he just doesn't do that. <laughs> it's like it's like why didn't the eagles take the ring to mordor which don't get me started on the eagles okay i can tell you exactly yeah, why those, they didn't but those fuckers it's, it's like he wouldn't do that because it's bad for the plot yeah i like i think it was stan lee that said somebody was like who would win spider-man or superman and he's like whoever the writer wants to win it's like whatever's yeah. <laughs> more whatever's better for the plot <laughs> It's like, who'd win, Goku or Saitama? It's like, well, on paper, Saitama, because nothing beats him. He kills everything, and that's his whole gimmick. But you can write it that neither of them die. Yeah. That's the power of storytelling, baby. Oh, it's so beautiful, isn't it? 
it also so, is very hard and it can go wrong and you can really tell when someone can't write something yeah uh well should we wrap her up yeah Get, uh, the, go, doom, the bubbles doom, 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 doom. of the episode ending and oh. the uh you hear that that's ooh. the water cooler moment where people can discuss <laughs> the episode now wow uh sorry to those of you who didn't want fnaf spoilers i guess you don't really get a podcast this week because that was pretty much the not, whole episode not but, all the podcasts yeah. are for you you know it's fine we needed to talk about it not we not everyone to. can enjoy everything, and I think that that's okay. Mm -hmm. And it's mm -hmm. not like it's the last episode of the podcast. There's plenty more. We'll talk about the Fraser reunion next week. <laughs> yes. The reboot. Oh, we're gonna have so many fun episodes soon because I'm coming overseas. Oh yeah, Ethan's gonna be person. here soon. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. He's going to be here on these dates at this address at this time. Oh yeah, baby. I was I was talking to uh to Ranbu at at TwitchCon. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm going to I'm going to be in Brighton soon. Uh and I was like, you should come on the you should come on the podcast and it was like that's actually really funny if you go to the UK and uh, you come all the way over there and have an American, <laughs> another American <laughs> on your podcast. And I was like, yes, it's perfect. It's not about the money. It's about sending a message. <laughs> it's about sending a message. It's not about where you're from. It's about where you are. Mm -hmm. Where you are now, and, and where you're going. Take that little tidbit with you and leak on, my friends. Leak on. Leak on. Leak on. Leak on! Leak on! Leak on! <laughs> <laughs>